Uh, hello everyone and thank you so much for joining us today and finding some time out of your busy schedules to attend our webinar. Uh, the topic of our today's session is boost sales and customer loyalty by integrating social into your e-commerce sites. Our session uh, will include a question and answer section as usual after the presentations of our speakers, so please feel free to put your questions into the chat box directly and we will answer them all after the speeches are over. Uh, today's session is hosted and organized by Tint and Promoter Companies and before we start I would like to mention in a few words who those companies are and why we think we are entitled to speak on today's topic. Uh, so Promoter Company has been providing complex online marketing services for 10 years now since 2004. Since that time we have gained Google Analytics and Google AdWords Partnership Certificates, won a couple of top SEOs badges and nominations by Promotion World Magazine. Also we have become marketing partners of Shopify, BigCommerce and Xcard e-commerce platforms and have worked with more than 350 clients worldwide helping them solve various online marketing issues they faced. Our friends here, Tint, uh, they help organizations uh, drive deeper engagement with their audiences through social media. Tint's platform allows brands to aggregate, curate and display any social media feeds anywhere, from Twitter to YouTube, from Jumbotrons to websites. Over um, 45,000 brands around the world use Tint to engage fans, delight followers and get the most out of user-generated content. Uh, and now I will I would like to introduce our today's speaker. Um, it's Lina Ruchko, a marketing assistant at Promoto. She is Google Analytics certified individual. She's a very enthusiastic online marketeer uh, who possesses experience in SEO, content marketing, and social media. She's passionate about everything connected with internet marketing and thinks it is a key element to any company's success these days. Um, Muriel McDonald, uh, a content hero at Tint. Uh, she manages teen social media marketing, writes teen's tweets, edits teen's blog, and works with clients to tell their social hub success stories. She also works with clients to help them identify all the ways they can utilize social media hubs to achieve their goals. Uh, and uh, now I will be giving the floor to Muriel, who will actually share her insights on boosting sales with, um, well, with the help of integration social into your e-commerce sites. Over to you, Muriel. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Elena. Um, thank you, Anna. Sorry, just a second. Uh, something. Can you take back over the screen for a second? Yeah, um, that's okay, sure. It happened just as I clicked show my screen. Sorry about that. I had my slides up and I clicked show my screen and then they disappeared. Um, let's that's try okay. that. Just let me know when you're ready. Can you transfer it to my screen? Yeah, sure. Okay, I think I'm ready. <laughs> Here you go. Hmm. I don't know why this is happening. So I'll just click show my screen and then click play. Can everyone see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yeah, I guess it's okay now. Can you see, is the GoToWebinar panel showing? No, no, no. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks, Anna, for inviting me to join you on this webinar. Sorry about my little technical difficulties there for a moment. I'm thrilled to be talking with you about an important topic for those of us who sell our products or services online. And that question is, how can e-commerce brands leverage social networks to maximize sales? Maybe you haven't touched social and you're wondering how to get started. Or maybe you are like many brands out there. Um, and you've invested time and energy, or the time and energy of one of your employees, in building a following on social networks like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and now you're wondering what you get out of it. And it's great that you have 20,000 followers, or maybe it's great that you have 100, but where is that return on your investment, and how do you get the most out of that? And that's a question that I'm here to answer today. For many e-commerce brands out there, social hubs have become the answer. From huge clothing brands like Forever 21 to smaller independent brands like Social Clothing Co. Um, it doesn't have to be clothing. Crave Jerky uses a social hub too. I don't know if you've had their jer beef jerky, but it is delicious. Um, if, if anyone's wondering what a social hub is, social hubs like Tint pull in social user-generated content like tweets, Facebook posts, and Instagrams from across platforms and allow brands to display that content. 
whether that's on their website or uh, on a Jumbotron at an event. But why social hubs? In every industry, brands are turning to social to replace or supplement traditional content creation and advertising. Social hubs are being used in concerts, contests, trade shows, advertising campaigns, fundraisers, hotel lobbies, websites. Uh, but why are they doing this? Well, they're a useful tool. They're a great tool for generating, engaging, and genuine content that is trusted by consumers. Uh, they make website content fresh and dynamic. You don't have to update copy. You can just moderate your social hub and let your fans and users write that copy for you. It also has a broader reach than traditional advertising. In traditional advertising, you design your you know, online advertising unit. That's not too traditional, but it's what many of us do today. And then whoever sees it, sees it. And that's the end of it. Um, with social hubs, you're incentivizing your users to tweet about you, to post about you. So not only do visitors to your website see that content, but every single follower for that user sees their content as well. Which brings me to the third and probably greatest thing about incentivizing your brand's biggest advocates to tweet about you and you know, post about you on Instagram um, is that consumers are increasingly wary about the authenticity of traditional advertising and they're more likely to trust recommendations from peers than from advertisers. So if you as a brand can figure out how to get uh, the peers of your potential customers to laud your brand with praise, that's going to be much more valuable than you yourself writing an ad that lauds your brand with praise. E-commerce is one of the industries that can benefit the most from social hubs because of this. A recent study by the IBM Institute for Business showed that 59% of respondents will listen to a friend's posts and pins and allow that to influence their purchasing decisions above other methods. If you are selling online, and I suspect that those of you attending this webinar are, um, then social hubs are your best tool for taking advantage of this. Integrating a social hub with your e-commerce platform can increase conversions while lowering cart abandonment rates. So hopefully I've sold you uh, on the idea that social hubs are a great tool for you. But how do you use this tool? What do you do with it? There's three big ways that e-commerce brands can take advantage of social hub technology. And I'm going to address each of those today and give you two examples of a real brand that used social hub technology to do this. The first is to create a social hub and run a hashtag contest. The second is to use call to action buttons to um, make posts into direct opportunities to sell. And the third opportunity is to use posts as testimonials or reviews on product and checkout pages. So the first, running a hashtag contest. You can use hashtag contests to encourage engagement and generate leads. The first example I have for you today is a hashtag contest that was run by Travelocity. Travelocity is an e-commerce brand that uses um, the uses their website to, among other things, sell tickets to places around the world. And they integrated that when they ran their hashtag contest. Um, they asked fans of their brand, visitors to their website, to hashtag I want to go and tell folks where they wanted to fly in the world. Um, this was a particularly successful campaign. They generated 35 million impressions in three months. 30,000 posts were aggregated, and after one commercial aired, 6,000 visitors came to their site in one day. That's the uh, spike that you see on this graph of their viewer traffic uh, to their website after they launched this hashtag campaign. So why was this so successful? Well, one of the reasons this was so successful is because of the creative ideas behind this campaign. Any ca hashtag campaign isn't guaranteed to be successful. You need to come up with a hashtag that appeals to the people who follow you and will get them dreaming about how to use your service. This is a great example because uh, they asked users of their website to talk about where they want to go. And so even though only one person is going to win a free trip after using this hashtag, all of these other users are now thinking, well, if I had the money, if I had the time, I would fly to this place using Travelocity. And now they've 
increase their opportunities to sell and they put themselves out there as this brand that uh, can make those dreams come true. This is another example of a hashtag contest. This was run by Birchbox, Birchbox France. Birchbox is an e-commerce beauty brand and Birchbox France ran this contest during their uh, during the World Cup and they asked visitors to their site what are you doing instead of watching football and they used the hashtag I'm gonna slaughter this French probably uh, contre sorry foot oh man uh, and this hashtag is another example of appealing to your user base contre sorry foot means something to the effect of anti football party um, and they were trying to appeal to their mostly uh, female users who were perhaps sick of watching football. They offered a 200 euro birch box uh, package as a prize. They aggregated 200 posts, they had 1,800 visitors, and 500 engagements. This was a relatively successful campaign, but it could have been more successful. Some of the things that they could have done to make this more successful, they could have added more networks. They only pulled in Instagram, and that's limiting. If your users on an Instagram, they're not going to participate in your contest. If you are running a contest, I encourage you to use as many networks as you have users on, as many networks as you see fit. They could have featured it more prominently on their website. This was in a social tab off to the side. If this had been in their homepage, they would have had a number of more uh, users and uh, probably more posts and engagements. And finally, to encourage uh, engagement, you can promote your contest with email blasts and on social networks. The second big way that you can take advantage of social hubs is with call to action buttons. With call to action buttons, you can monetize your social media and drive visitors to your website to check out pages or email forms. Uh, in case anyone doesn't know what a call to action button is, call to action buttons are, uh, or rather calls to action, ask your users, ask your visitors to your website to do something specific like, uh, click here, or donate now, or buy this now. Deborah Lippman uses call to action buttons very effectively. Deborah Lippman is a nail polish e-commerce brands, and they pull in user-generated gener content as well as their own content and add call to action buttons on every post. Those call to action buttons are these red ones right here that say shop now. And those CTAs link product pages um, are links to specific product pages so that when uh, an individual is on their social hub looking at the fan implementations of Deborah Littman's nail polish or maybe they're checking to see if their own photo has shown up, there's this button, every single post, shop now. Daddario & Co, um, a musical brand, musical instrument brand, uses a social hub to uh, promote um, their new strings and YXL guitar strings, and they added CTA buttons, call to action buttons, on their website, on their social hub as well. And these say, click to buy NYXLs, and they lead directly to their Amazon product page. This is a really creative way. If you're a small organization, and you don't have the infrastructure on your website to uh, sell products, rather than taking them to a product page on your own website, you can just take them straight from your page to the Amazon page and sell your product that way. Finally, testimonials and reviews. Social hubs may be the future of product page reviews. You can use social hubs on your product pages or checkout pages. As I mentioned earlier, consumers are wary of traditional advertising and they're wary of buying products without hearing from a peer that it is a valuable product. A lot of companies get around this or solve this problem by having traditional customer reviews on their website. So after a customer uses their product, they're prompted to log, come back onto the website, review the product, give their opinion. And this is successful for many brands, but it's not successful for all brands. Uh, some part of this may be that not all users want to come back to a website. Not all customers want to come back and leave a product, even if they enjoy the product. But for most of us, taking a picture um, of yourself in a new outfit or of a new poster that you just bought and hung on a wall um, and then sharing it out with your social network is a very natural thing to do. So brands can take advantage of this and replace or supplement traditional 
consumer reviews with social consumer reviews. Orange and Park uh, uses consumer reviews, um, sorry, uses social posts on an individual product page pages to showcase the ways that customers have used their prints. So here they sell the San Diego Beach Towns print, and then below that, right where you can add it to cart, there is their social hub. It's this horizontal bar at the bottom of their page, and it's users who have hung their art on their walls and are tweeting or are Instagramming about how great they think it looks. Um, and this is a really great way to ease your customers' fears and increase conversions at this point of sale. Buying is a scary moment for a lot of customers online. You don't know the quality of the product you're getting. You don't really know what the product is you're getting. You haven't touched it. You haven't looked at it. And social posts are the way to calm your users and encourage them to make that purchase. BG Skin Care also uses uh, testimonials, social testimonials on their product page. Um, they ask viewers to their home page, today you will experience one act of excess. Does your skin have to show it? The idea being uh, we all drink alcohol or eat fatty foods or don't exercise enough. But maybe if you use this Vichy serum, you can still do those things and have beautiful skin. But once you go to the product page, it features photos from fans that have pictures of their Vichy serum and then their act of excess. It's a creative twist to asking uh, for testimonials. One of the reasons that they might have done this and one of the reasons that this is a clever tactic is that this is a new product. They're not going to have hundreds of user reviews saying I used this product for months and now my skin is more beautiful. They've just released it, that's why they're pushing it on their website, and they want to use social reviews to encourage people to use it. But how do you do that if you know your first customers are still just receiving their product in the mail? So they've designed their hashtag campaign to encourage people who've just gotten the product and are excited about it but haven't actually started using it yet to take a picture with it and say, look, I'm willing to try this product too. It's another kind of testimonial, a really clever way to get testimonials for a product that's new and otherwise wouldn't have these testimonials. Finally, there's a bonus. If you invest in uh, social hubs on your website and you happen to have your product sold in a brick and mortar store, if you have a brick and mortar store, you can put your social hub in the store. This is a way of uniting the online experience and the in-person experience. And those user reviews, those product descriptions, those pictures of peers wearing your outfits, wearing your glasses, trying your serum, uh, can be in your store as well. So are social hubs right for you? Probably. Uh, they can spur user engagement and boost web traffic with a hashtag contest. You can use call to actions to increase those conversions once you've brought that website traffic to your page. And once you get those users to your product page, you can use genuine and trusted content as reviews and testimonials to help you make the final sale. Thanks for listening to my section of the uh, webinar today. Uh, I really appreciate it. We are offering those of you who have attended the webinar 10% uh, off your first month at Tint if you're excited about social hubs and you want to try them. And you can contact sales at tintup.com and mention this offer and uh, we'll get you started. Uh, back to you, Anna. Thank you so much, Muriel. It was really exciting. And now I'm passing the word over to Lena, uh, who will walk us through um, all the steps of actually measuring the return on investment from your social activities. Hello, everyone. Firstly, thank you, Muriel, for such a great speech on social hubs. And uh, I would like also to tell about a bit about how brands can use social media in another ways, specifically how can they use uh, user-generated content from social media. So uh, one of the ways to use social media for brand progress is uh, to ask users to submit branded content. Uh, the benefits is our higher user engagement, more interaction with the brand, and better affinity to the brand. So the example is the contest which Starbucks had. Uh, they asked uh, users to uh, create 
custom designed uh, to, cust to custom design uh, the Starbucks cups and submit the photos of their creations are by using the hashtag white cup contest to uh, social media as the result the brand received huge amount of branded content very visually appealing content which uh, it could feature on their on its uh, social media accounts for example on facebook page and pinterest page this is the example this is this uh, show the screen from pinterest board with their um, customers' art. Another example is uh, GoPro's contest. Uh, the incentive of this contest was um, offering uh, any customer, any fan, uh, an opportunity to become famous and get featured on GoPro's social media accounts uh, to be featured in the photo of the day or video of the day. So uh, the brand asked users, asked users to make their own video or photo and uh, use it with the GoPro camera and submit it. Uh, so as the result, our GoPro as a brand received lots of, um, of brand and content. It spurred higher users' activity and what is more, it saw an increase in sales because people went to the shops to buy a GoPro, GoPro cameras to be able to make um, better videos. Um, another way to use uh, user-generated content on social media is a uh, contest between the users. Again, uh, as the result, the brands receive more visits to the sites, sales growth, and higher brand awareness. The example is the brand uh, um, which had a contest on their Facebook page. They asked fans to write a 500-word essay telling why they think their moms deserve a free makeover for the Mother's Day. And uh, in the end, they received new page likes, better followers engagement, and of course, other benefits as well. And uh, the third way how you, how brands can use social media content is uh, how you can use actually a Tint application is to display our social media content on your site. Again, uh, the benefits are better user engagement, uh, promotion of brands' accounts uh, on social media, and um, uh, better metrics such as uh, longer time on the site. So the such user usually stays longer on the site and use more pages and lower bounce rate, which means that the user doesn't leave the site immediately after landing on it, but it uh, proceeds to other pages and use other content and probably then makes the purchase. And now I would like to talk how to measure the results from your uh, social media campaigns and from your social media efforts. The first thing is to talk about is how to measure visitor engagement on the site. So you have your social media campaigns, your social media efforts, you see people who are visiting your site and now you want to, um, to know how, how they behave on your site. Uh, there are three metrics. Or which you can use are three metrics in Google Analytics, which you can use to measure your visitors' engagement. Uh, this is bound, this are bounce rate, average session duration, and pages per session, number of pages viewed per session. Also, there is um, a, a separate set of for. Uh, um, metrics uh, which you can uh, use thanks to custom goals and events. So first of all, our bounce rate, as I said, this is the rate which shows the percentage of visits uh, in which users after viewing one page left leave the site. So usually it's considered as a negative sign apart from the um, case when the user is completely satisfied with the content of the first page it sees. So for example, if this uh, blog post and the user lands on such post are on such page with the post and it's and it reads fully this post probably for half an hour and then leaves the site, uh, that will show high bounce rate, but it doesn't mean that the user will not be satisfied. So please keep in account this. Uh, page number of pages viewed per session are usually it's, it is thought that uh, the more pages per session the user views the better and average session duration of course brands are interested that people who visit the site they stay are on the site 
longer because then they will be able to see more content. So we advise you to uh, use channels uh, report in Google Analytics and um, compare different sources of traffic uh, by these metrics, bounce rate, page sh pages per session and average session duration. Actually, if you click on the social, you will be able to see the breakdown by different social networks and compare uh, and uh, find out what social network sends you uh, the most engaged audience are as to the goals and events. Are, there are not only uh, such macro conversions as the purchase on your site. Actually, there are different micro conversions on the site which you would like to uh, track as well. For example, ebook download, viewing a certain page, or newsletter sign up, and different other uh, events and goals. Um, it's possible to set up them in Google Analytics and then track and measure, and measure uh, how much uh, such events and goals happen um, uh, with when visitors from different social networks access your site. So you can check this guide to learn how to set up these goals and events. And one one example of the event which shows us the level of the user engagement is the scroll depth. So you can um, see how many users are scrolling, how, uh, how, how many users are scrolling the page uh, further to the bottom. And usually it means that such users are more engaged with the content they see and they, they they interested. So you can, if you would like to set up such event for your site, you can check this post or this post and find out how to implement this. Um, apart from these uh, user engagement metrics, there are tools which can help you actually see the behavior of the visitors on your site in real time. So you can see where people click on your, um, on your site, uh, where they navigate to real, really helpful tools. So one of such tools, uh, which is completely free and we advise you to use it, is Yandex Metrica. So Yandex is the largest Russian search engine and um, as for Google, there is a Google Analytics. Uh, Yandex has Yandex Metrica, also an analytical tool. And it provides a set of heat maps uh, which uh, show the elements of your site pages in different colors depending on how frequently they are viewed or clicked or scrolled by the users. So you can see which elements of your site attracts attract uh, the most of the attention of your users, of site visitors, which is really helpful. Um, also, there is another tool which is called Wipevisor, which shows you, uh, which actually replaces in video format users' actions on, on, uh, on your site page. So you select the page, you select uh, the visitor or the, the session which you would like to analyze, and you see how user hovers the mouth, mouse uh, over certain elements of your page, where he clicks on, uh, what elements of the site page um, caught uh, their attention. So a really, really helpful tool and we advise you to make the use of it. Because then you will find out whether these elements of, uh, of from social media which you embed, for example, on your site are effective or not uh, and make corresponding decisions. Um, there is an article which will help you to create an account in Yandex Metrica. It's not uh, difficult, uh, so make uh, the use of it. Now uh, I would like to talk about uh, how to evaluate return on investment uh, which you put in your social media efforts. So of course uh, you want to see business results from social media campaigns. So let's talk how to do that and how to measure them. Uh, it's worth to note that Different marketing channels impact customers' decision in different way and at different points of his path to the purchase. So, for example, there are channels which um, which are called assisting channels because uh, they help to build awareness, uh, consideration, or intent, and they usually appear earlier in the purchase funnel. So it does mean that so directly. After them, a user doesn't go and make the purchase, 
but it doesn't mean that such channels are not effective. Um, <clears throat> another, channels, another group of channels are called last interaction channels because they usually act as the last step before the purchase. So, uh, social media uh, usually are act as the assistant channels and that is why we need to analyze them separately. Uh, in Google Analytics, there is a separate, um, there is a special report which is called multi-channel funnels and then assisted conversion section, where you can see our different sources of traffic, including social network, and you can see the number of conver of conversions uh, where this channel assisted, and <clears throat> the number of conversions where this channel acted as the last click, in which this channel completed the conversion, actually. Um, you will be able also to see the value of such conversions and, uh, their, um, and their proportion. So, if you see uh, a number closer to the zero, it means that uh, this particular channel com more completes conversions than assists them. And again, if you see the number higher than one, it means that such channel uh, more frequently assists the conversions rather than um, completes them. So, this information will be useful because then you will be know how to treat these channels and probably um, how, which results they bring to your site and that is why uh, probably you will be able to amend your marketing campaign in social media. Yeah, it's, uh, please keep in mind that you need to be able to make the use of this report, you need to uh, set up goals or e-commerce tracking uh, prior to this in Google Analytics. You can check this guide for this purpose. Uh, also, in this multi-channel funnels uh, set of reports, you can find another report which is called Top Conversions Pack. So, <clears throat> this is if you want to see so, you know that social media assists the conversion. And now, you want to know on which stage uh, these social media channels assist the conversion. And then, you can make the use of this report. So, you can, uh, then you see the breakdown, uh, these, you can see the sequence of different channels and see uh, the number of conversions and again conversion value. Really helpful. What is more, and it's a really great feature, you can select source medium path option and then you will be able to see not only the general social media uh, channel, but you will be able to see um, separate um, channels uh, in social media accounts. For example, this is the screenshot from the account of our, of our client which uses VK, Russian social media uh, network, uh, to promote their products and here we can see that <clears throat> on which stage VK um, contributes to the conversion on the site. Uh, because, Google, uh, because social media campaigns are becoming more and more popular, luckily Google Analytics now has um, a separate set of reports that allow us to analyze our social media efforts and bridge social media campaigns with the business metrics and results. Uh, so, we navigate to acquisition section and find social set of reports. Here we can see, for example, in the overview section, we can analyze social value, so-called social value. Uh, we can see the share of <coughs> conversions where uh, social media acted, completed the conversions. We can see the share where social media acted, contributed to social con uh, to conversions, it means assisted them, and we can see the overall number of conversions and compare these results. Also, if we navigate to the conversion section, we can see breakdown by different social networks and uh, see um, the number of conversions and conversion value which each of these social networks uh, has brought to us. A really powerful report and um, if we click here assisted VS versus last interaction analysis, we can see uh, the breakdown and see, find out um, for each uh, social network, we can see how many, in how many cases uh, this social network assisted the conversion, uh, helped the conversion and in how many cases 
it acted as the last click um, channel after which the uh, customer, after which the user made the purchase on your site. Network referrals is also really helpful if you want <coughs> to analyze um, engagement of your site visitors. Once again, you can compare by these metrics uh, different social networks, which is really helpful and insightful. Social users flow, I personally love this report uh, because it's really powerful and you can play a lot with it. So it shows different social networks. Uh, at the top, it's the most used paths. Uh, it, so sh it shows different social networks and paths which users take uh, after landing on your site. So what product pages they visit, to, to what other product pages they proceed, probably where they leave your site or after what pages they proceed to the shopping cart and buy on your site. Really great report and I'm, I advise you to use it a lot and extensively and in your mark, um, marketing campaign analysis. Um, since Google Analytics data about social sources of traffic is not always accurate, for example, like in this case, we can see that Google Analytics refers to social networks, Discuss and WordPress. So we recommend you to analyze traffic from social media accounts also in the channel section of Google Analytics. For example, we navigate again to the channels, we select source medium, and here we can see different social networks and how much they, how well they contributed to the revenue of your site, uh, how many transactions they generated, revenue, and so on. Again, it's possible if you have your e-commerce tracking set up on the site. Um, if you run um, paid campaigns in social media, uh, by default they will be attributed to the referrals this, like this here. Uh, of course, it's convenient for you to analyze them separately, so we advise you to take the links from your paid campaigns on social media and then analyze these channels separately. Uh, so this is how you can do. If you tag the links uh, from your social media campaigns, you can navigate to campaigns, select again source medium and see different social networks and uh, through which uh, medium, uh, organic or paid. For example, here this is cost per click. It means it is paid campaign from Facebook. And here we can see this is a group post. And uh, so you can analyze the effectiveness of your different campaigns on different social media accounts. And the name of campaign you will be able to find here. Here you will see the breakdown of these campaigns uh, by their name. Uh, this is how you can tag the links. You install Google Analytics URL Builder, you uh, paste uh, the URL which you want to tag, and then uh, you fill in the required fields. You name the source, uh, in our case it will be some kind of social network, you uh, fill, the, mm, fill in the uh, medium which will be, for example, PPC or click or cost per click or something like that uh, if it's a paid campaign and then the name of your campaign. And this is how the final URL, tagged URL, will look like. Uh, if you are talking about paid promotion on social media, it's, it's good to, uh, to um, mention Facebook advertising because uh, advertising on Facebook, uh, paid campaigns on Facebook are um, very popular right now because usually they show lower customer acquisition costs than in adverts and they offer really tremendous selection of targeting options. For example, here you can see how many uh, different actions we can target <coughs> with our ads on Facebook. And here, uh, the example of um, targeting options. Uh, as you can see, we can target not only the um, location, the age, uh, the gender of our audience, but we can go more specific and um, target, for example, people who are connected to a certain person or people who are connected to a certain brand, people who are like something, for example, Coca-Cola, and uh, and from this screenshot you can even see that we can 
um, differentiate parents depending on the age of their children, which is really powerful. And uh, we had cases um, when uh, this Facebook advertising was really very effective uh, for e-commerce promotion. For example, in this case, that was a B2C uh, product promotion on Facebook, um, and the click-through rate was as high as 7.3, which is really good. Um, and the site, in the end, the site saw a really good uh, number of volume of visits from Facebook advertising and saw increase in the revenue. So this is all for now. I thank you for your attention and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me right now or to mail me later. I will be glad to help you. Um, thank you so much, uh, ladies. Uh, and um, of course, I would also like to thank you, our loyal audience, and um, as a bonus to those who managed to stay with us till the end, um, I would like to offer um, you a small audit. Uh, if you feel that you are stuck with your online marketing efforts and you feel that you can use some help and advice, please apply for our free audit of your website, which will include SEO, uh, PPC and usability audits, as well as general insight on best online marketing strategies and tactics for your business online. Uh, it will be held in a format of um, a personalized webinar. Um, and uh, it will take from 20 to 30, maybe 40 minutes. Um, in a moment, sorry, um, give me a moment, I will email you, I will send you the link um, to chat. Here we go, so please uh, feel free to follow the link and uh, fill in the form to request the audit. Um, and. Um, that's it for now. Uh, as for now, I see no questions uh, have risen. Uh, but please, if you come up with any questions after the webinar is over, uh, feel free to email our speakers directly or reply to any of my emails that uh, you receive from me. Um, thank you so much. Uh, stay in touch with us, follow our social media accounts and uh, watch for other tips that we offer on online marketing and social media marketing. Um, thank you so much for attending. Have a great rest of the day. See you.